Hey everyone, welcome to a deep dive all about making a living on eBay. Sounds exciting. It is. You know you've got the eBay bug and yeah. you're thinking, maybe the side hustle could be a full-time gig. I feel like a lot of people are thinking about that these days. Right. So you've given me this huge stack of advice from people who are already doing it. Yeah, some really interesting stories in there. Definitely. We're going to unpack it all, figure out how much these sellers really make and what they're selling. Spoiler alert, it's not all luxury handbags. Nope. Think waffle makers and old video games. By the end, you'll know if eBay is the right path for you. Sounds like a plan. Where do we start? Well, one thing that popped up a lot is consistency. Like Angie from Angie Resells. Yeah. She was adamant about treating it like a real business, not just a hobby. Exactly. And it shows in her results, right? Almost $120,000 in sales last year. But. There's always a but. Yeah. After fees, shipping, Itch. taxes, cost of goods. She took home around $58,000. Still good. But definitely something to keep in mind if you think this is a get-rich-quick scheme. No magic button here. More like a lot of spreadsheets. It's like running any business. There are operating costs, inventory to manage. Yeah. Would you be comfortable with that level of financial planning? It's something to think about for sure. Now, remember desert sellers. Oh, yeah. Loved his approach. His bread and butter items, shoes, electronics, those everyday things that sell consistently. Smart. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're starting out. Building a steady stream of sales on those lower priced items gives you a reliable base while you figure things out. Exactly. Speaking of figuring things out, Ozzy Flipper had a great point about finding your niche. Yeah, he really carved out his space with DVDs and video games. Becoming an expert makes such a difference. Angie said that too. Like, you build a reputation, get a loyal customer base. People trust you because you really know your stuff. Yeah. What could our listeners specialize in? That's the big question, right? What are they already passionate about? And once you've got that figured out, yeah. Ozzy Flipper had some great tips for staying on top of things. Oh yeah, all about the data. He uses apps like EIT to track his profits. And checks eBay's sold listings to see what's in demand. Gotta love data. Absolutely. Helps you make informed decisions, spot trends, and price your items competitively. Working smarter, not harder. But Golden State Picker and Aussie Flipper both said those early days weren't easy. Long hours, financial struggles. It's a real hustle. Makes you wonder, are you cut out for the entrepreneurial life? It takes resilience, that's for sure, and a willingness to constantly learn and adapt. No room for complacency on eBay. Now, how do you stand out in such a crowded marketplace? Daily Refinement had some thoughts. Oh, he's all about the details. Mastering product photography, writing killer listings. And top-notch customer service, it all adds up. Definitely. It also signals to eBay's algorithms that you're a reliable seller. Good photos, detailed descriptions. Positive customer feedback. It all boosts your visibility in search results, right? Exactly. Like building trust with eBay and D your buyers. Speaking of boosting your business, have you heard of BrianGarvin.com? I think I have. It's Brian with an I, and he's got this free affiliate guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of great info. Wow, that's a lot of words. You just submit your name and email and click the link they send you. It's in Brian's YouTube bio, easy peasy. Nice. Now, where were we? Oh, right, standing out on eBay. And the great reseller life takes a totally different approach, all about thrift store finds. I love that. He aims for a 10x to 15x return on investment. Crazy right. That takes some serious skill but it shows that there are so many paths to success on eBay. What works for one seller might not work for another. It's all about finding your own groove. Exactly. And that's what we'll be exploring further in our next part. Stay tuned. See you there. Welcome back. Last time we got the basics down for building an eBay business. Now let's get into some of the more advanced stuff. Yeah, let's level up. I'm really curious about those eBay algorithms. Daily Refinement talked about how even small tweaks can make a huge difference in your listings. It's true. Tiny changes can have a big impact. Think of it like this. You could have the most amazing product in the world, but if no one can find it... It's not going to sell. Exactly. So optimizing for eBay's search engine is key. Using the right keywords in your titles and descriptions. Ah, so it's like SEO for eBay. You got it. <laughs> Gotta think like a buyer. What words would they use to search for this item? But it's not just about keywords. There's more. Oh, yeah. Visuals matter too. High quality photos, of course, but daily refinement also suggests using a consistent background and style for your photos. So everything looks nice and professional. Exactly, it's like creating a brand experience within eBay. 
grabbing the buyer's attention makes your listing stand out. Makes total sense. Okay. Clear descriptions too, right? Give all the essential details without overwhelming people. Right. Information overload is a real thing. Okay, now let's talk about eBay's promotional tool. Oh yeah, like promoted listings. Angie Resells mentioned those. She said it's worth it, especially during peak shopping seasons. Gives your products that extra boost, like a well-placed ad. But as with any advertising, you need to be strategic. Weigh the costs and benefits. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Back to those algorithms. Yeah. Daily Refinement said building a loyal customer base can really help your visibility. Absolutely. It's easier to sell to someone who already loves your shop, right? Definitely. Repeat customers are gold. Oh. But how do you actually build that loyalty? It starts with the basics. Amazing customer service. Answer questions quickly, be upfront about shipping, and resolve any issues fairly. So make the whole experience smooth and enjoyable. Exactly. But then you add those personal touches. Make people feel valued like they're more than just a transaction. A little handwritten thank you note. That kind of thing. It can make a huge difference. Turns a sale into a connection. I love that. Yeah. Okay, now for the less glamorous part. Huh. The behind the scenes stuff. Oh yeah, all the logistics. We talked about finances, but what about inventory and shipping? That can get overwhelming fast. Daily Refinement had a great point about having a system, even if it's simple. Like Golden State Picker with his shelves and bins. Exactly. Just find what works for you and stick to it. So you always know what you have and where it is. Now, shipping, that can be a time suck. Ozzy Flipper had a great tip batch processing. Pack multiple orders at once. Ah, uh, so you're not running back and forth to the post office all day. Exactly. Little efficiencies like that add up. And always use tracking numbers. It tracks both the buyer and the seller. Okay, last thing on my mind those algorithms again. Still a bit mysterious, huh? Yeah. How do we actually make them happy? It's all about understanding what eBay wants, which is... Happy buyers. Yes. And to do that, they need to connect buyers with the right products quickly. So the algorithm is all about relevance. Meaning? When someone searches for something, eBay wants to show listings that are actually a good match. That's where those keywords come in. Gotcha. If I'm looking for vintage jeans, I don't want to see listings for baby clothes. Exactly. But it goes beyond keywords. They also look at listing quality, good photos, detailed descriptions, competitive pricing. But basically, all the stuff we've been talking about makes sense. Right. It also takes your performance into account, your no. feedback score, shipping times. So basically, our reputation as a seller. Exactly. eBay rewards reliable sellers. And the more items you sell, the more data eBay has to understand what you do. So it all ties together. Okay, we've covered a lot in this part. We have, from algorithms and promotions to logistics and customer loyalty. It can feel overwhelming. It can. But hey, it's all about taking your eBay game to the next level, right? Right. And before we wrap up, one last reminder. Oh, I know. Visit BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is amazing. Over 12,300 words of pure gold. Find the link in his YouTube bio. You won't regret it. Now on to our final part. We're going to explore the mindset of successful eBay sellers. Ooh, getting philosophical. I like it. Let's go. Uh. All right, final part of our eBay deep dive. We've talked strategy. We've talked algorithms. But now I want to talk about something a little more fuzzy. Fuzzy. You know, finding your niche, that sweet spot where your passion meets profit. Ah, I see what you mean. Like Angie resells, she actually said she wished she'd picked a niche sooner. Yeah. Makes sourcing so much easier when you have that focus. You become an expert. People trust you. It can really make a difference. Think about Ozzy Flipper. He turned his love of DVDs and video games into a whole business. But how do our listeners figure out their niche? It starts with looking inward. What are you already knowledgeable about? What gets you excited? What do you find yourself gravitating towards at thrift stores or online? Exactly. Are you a vintage clothing fanatic? A tech whiz who loves tinkering with old gadgets. Or maybe you've got an eye for those unique, quirky items that everyone wants. Once you have some ideas, do your research. Check eBay's sold listings, see what's popular. Data, data, data. Always. It helps you understand the market. And don't be afraid to experiment a bit, list some items, and see what happens. You never know what might take off. Okay, let's talk sourcing. The great reseller life is all about thrifting. Oh, yeah, he's a master. But there are other options too, right? Tons. Online marketplaces, estate sales, even clearance sections at retail stores, like Desert Sellers does. It's like a treasure hunt. You never know what you'll find. The thrill of the hunt is definitely part of the appeal. Okay, so you've found your treasures, you've researched your niche, now it's time to list them. And make those listings shine. Daily Refinement was all about that. He knows what he's talking about. 
Those listings are your first impression. They need to grab attention. High quality photos are a must, obviously. Non-negotiable. Good lighting, multiple angles, show off the best features. Make it like a mini photo shoot for each item. Exactly. Yeah. And Aussie Flipper was so good about detailed descriptions, measurements, condition, any flaws. Transparency is key. Absolutely. Build trust with buyers. Then there's pricing. Do your research. Sold listings are your best friend. They really are. Find that sweet spot. Competitive but profitable. And don't be afraid to adjust prices as needed. It's a dynamic market. Okay, yep. we've covered so much, but there's one more thing I want to talk about. It's not a strategy. It's not a technique. It's the secret sauce. Exactly. And that is passion. Ah, the fuel that keeps us going. If you don't love what you're selling, it will show. It'll be harder to stay motivated. Your listings will feel flat. And buyers can sense that. Totally. Yeah. So find something you're genuinely excited about. Let that passion shine through. It makes all the difference. And speaking of things that make a difference, don't forget to check out BrianGarvin.com. Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is a game changer. Link in his YouTube bio. Oh. Okay, so that wraps up our deep dive into making a living on eBay. We covered a lot. We did. From finding your niche and sourcing products to mastering those algorithms and building a loyal customer base. It's all about treating your eBay venture like a real business. And remembering that it takes time, effort, and a willingness to constantly learn and adapt. But most importantly, it takes passion. Find something you love, put in the work, and the sky's the limit. That's right. So get out there, find your eBay niche, and start building your dream. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And remember, stay curious.